Are you looking to make somebody a co-host for your next virtual event on Zoom or maybe your Zoom webinar or your Zoom meeting? Well, I've had a couple of you guys ask me to do a video on this and so here it is. I'm going to lay out exactly how you can make someone a co-host in Zoom, both how to do it and give you a couple reasons maybe why you should consider it if you didn't even think you needed a co-host at your next Zoom event. Before we get into it, I do want to remind you to like, subscribe, turn on that little notification bell so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. If you enjoy what you're hearing, please drop in the comments. If you have questions, I know Zoom can be really intimidating. There's a lot of things I think you don't know you don't know, so feel free to keep giving me feedback. I love hearing from you. And without further ado, let's get back into it. So before I show you how to make someone a co-host in Zoom, I do want to explain what a co-host even is. And so if you're the one who creates the meeting, the meeting is hosted or the webinar is hosted in your Zoom account, you're going to be the host of the meeting. So you're the person who actually hits start. You as the host can make anybody a co-host. You don't have to, they don't have to have the same email address as you, they don't have to be from the same company. And this is something that just gives the co-host almost all of the same privileges that you have as the host. There are a couple nuances that co-hosts cannot, for example, in a webinar, co-hosts cannot end the webinar, only the host can. But a co-host could start recording, a co-host can make breakout rooms, can move from breakout room to breakout room, can allow people into the waiting room, you can change the settings in the chat if you want people to only be able to talk publicly or privately. So there's a lot of benefits to having a co-host and every time Zoom updates, they've started to make the co-host settings more and more robust, which is great. One of the biggest updates I got excited about was that co-hosts now can make breakout rooms before it could only be the host. And so that really determined in my planning process very strategically who we wanted the host of the meeting to be. Benefits of co-hosting, it just gives more people the ability to actually help you on the admin side of Zoom. And so if you're a speaker and you're gonna have somebody who's helping you run your Zoom, make sure they're a co-host or make them host and you be a co-host. It just gives somebody else who has your back and is able to do a lot of the settings that you need to do. Now, if you're doing a larger scale event, I would encourage almost everybody to be a co-host who is a part of the actual event running process. So any of your event assistants, any of your speakers even sometimes, um, my only caveat with that is it can get distracting if you were doing a Zoom meeting because as a co-host you do see when people like enter the waiting room and so if you have some more VIP speakers or it's something you don't want to bog them down with, then maybe don't consider making them host co-hosts since they're just, just delivering and just speaking. So, but without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty, so here I am in Zoom and you can see I have myself in here, I also put my phone. Now, one of the caveats I should have said too with being a host is you do have to have more than one person in the meeting to make a co-host. So say you're following along with what I'm doing right now and you're the only person in your Zoom meeting, you're not gonna see what I'm seeing. So what I often like to do is either um, have my phone or have my iPad also join the meeting. So you just need more than one physical device. Um, so once you have, you have two people in the meeting, there's two ways to put on a co-host. So I can either, which actually first, let me show you. So you can see here, oh, and it already made my phone automatically a co-host. So you can see here next on the participants list, Logan Clements, that's me. Um, I'm the host and my phone is automatically the co-host. And this is because I, it's my phone. So when it's two versions of the double me uh, logged into the same account, you'll see that it automatically kind of makes you a host. But let me remove that privilege. So if, for example, now that we're in a new meeting, um, I, you see I have host and Logan's phone has nothing next to it. So if I wanna make it a co-host, I'm gonna to toggle my mouse over the name Logan's phone. I'm gonna see the little blue more pop up. I'm gonna click that. And then you're gonna see this little drop down appear and it's gonna say make co-host. So now it's gonna have a little pop up and says, do you wanna make Logan's phone the co-host? And I'm gonna make co-host. You'll see a little notification and this notification up in the upper right hand corner, that does go out to all of your attendees. So everyone sees someone's made a co-host. So fun little note, I just like to do this usually before I let an audience in or any public facing people. But so now I'm host and I have them as a co-host. Now at any time I could either make my phone the host and the minute you make someone the host, it's going to remove your own privileges. So if I did this, I said, make Logan's phone host, change host, you're gonna see I've now lost my privileges. It doesn't automatically downgrade me to co-host. So now you can see I can't, um, in the chat, I can go to the chat, but I can't, I can just save it. I can't change any of the settings. Now Zoom has done an update, which I love this, which lets you reclaim host here. You'll see that pop up 
Again, you have to be having your participants open, so click participants, and it allows you to reclaim host since it's your account. So now you're back to a co you're back to being the host. And as the host, you can see, oh look, I can change the Zoom settings. I can also make people stop their video. I can rename them. I can put them in the waiting room. But I'm going to make my Zoom my phone co-host again, so you can see that. And so the only way that you can do that is either through the participant list, or if you toggle over here over the three dots. So once again, I'm just going to remove it for example's sake. Let's withdraw co-host permission. Then I can toggle over the video as well and three dots and it drops down and you see here, make co-host or make co-host, make host or make co-host. <laughs> wow, tongue twister. So then I'm gonna hit make co-host. Now, if for some reason I decided to, as, to make them host and I've removed my privileges, you'll see now when I click them, all I can do is chat or pin them. So I've been actually downgraded to an attendee. I can do all those things for myself. I can, I can change things, but I can't really adjust any of the um, of the settings that I'm just going to reclaim host privileges for myself and then once I've now again to just to reverse that for you once I've become the host I that does revoke any privileges from Logan's phone um, and now you can see I have polling reactions I have everything recording to the cloud all of that stuff comes back and that disappeared when I was no longer the host or co-host and that's how you make someone a co-host in your next zoom meeting Hopefully this was helpful to you. You were able to learn just how to make a co-host. Again, remember, you need to have more than one person in the meeting to be able to even see some of the options that I'm talking about. The benefits of having a co-host include that you have almost all of the same privileges as a host. So anyone who you would want to help you with the recording, with letting people in from the waiting room, changing the settings in, in your chat of who can chat with who, um, launching polls, creating breakout rooms, bonuses that co-hosts also can jump from breakout room to breakout room, even if you've disabled the ability for attendees to choose their own room. So anybody that you would want to be able to hop around freely during your breakouts, you want to make sure they're a co-host. And then the last thing I'll just put in as a bonus tip is alternative hosts. Now, this is alternative hosts and co-hosts can get very confusing, just like my whole video that I have about pinning and spotlighting. I think people use them all interchangeably, but alternative hosts is something you set up in the back end of your Zoom settings, and it allows you to put a different email address as the alternative host, meaning someone who can start your meeting. Now, caveat, that person has to be a part of your organization. So if you have a pro account with Zoom, you'll have one license. Now, to add somebody as an alternative host, you would need to add a license for them. So if you're part of an organization or a company Zoom, it's very easy. You can just add anybody else who is a part of that company Zoom account. But if you are a singular pro user, you would unfortunately have to pay for a second license to list somebody as an alternative host. So very helpful for any company events you're doing, but if you're an independent freelancer, event person who gets hired in, it's gonna be really hard and you actually can't really take advantage of the alternative host scenario. But one of the reasons why you would want one would be, for example, if uh, the original host has some crazy emergency and they're not gonna be able to be there at all to start your meeting, then having an alternative host is helpful. But a workaround that I've found for events that I do is actually you can still, if you can have that person like start the meeting on their phone and then you jump in and they transfer host privileges to the second person, that's a way to kind of um, avoid that situation and not have to use the alternative host function. But my biggest thing for you is just co-host and alternative host are two separate things. One is just changing the host, who the host is. Co-host is essentially like a wingman for the host of the Zoom meeting because you're able to do a lot of the same functions. Well, hopefully you learned something new about hosts and co-hosts today. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event planning, running your own business, and all things Zoom. <laughs> As always, it's been really fun chatting with you and I'll talk to you guys again next week. I drop new videos every single Monday, so give me a like or a follow if you'd like to hear more. Thanks everybody, bye.